Hello and welcome to this video about electrolysis. So this is quite a big topic. So first of all in this video I'm just going to introduce to you the fundamentals of electrolysis, maybe recap some things that you already know and then in later videos I'm going to look in more detail about half equations and specific examples of electrolysis. So let's kick off first of all. Um, clues in the name with electrolysis. It uses electricity to um, split up essentially a compound allowing it to go into its elements. So the clues in the name there, electro, electricity and if you pass an electric current um, through certain substances they will be able to break down into uh, their charged particles and be able to move throughout um, the substance. So if we start off with the example of something like lead bromide, lead bromide um, is an ionic substance. We know that because you've got a metal bonding with a non-metal. So it's an ionic compound and normally it is um, just a white powder. So normally it's just a solid powder and if you were to put um, electrodes into that powder you wouldn't be able to split the compound because it is solid the lead ions and the bromide ions are not free to move but if you remember back from our um, properties of an ionic compound when they are molten that when when they are allowed to flow when they are a liquid they can then be broken up by electrolysis so this would have to be heated and turn into molten lead bromide and when that happens you can then use electrolysis to split the compound up into lead and bromine. So let's use lead bromide as an example if we wanted to um, separate the lead bromide into lead and bromine you would put the molten lead bromide in a container and into that container you would put so the molten lead bromide in there and into that you would put these electrodes now we have two electrodes we have the positive electrode which sometimes you'll see called the anode as well if you can't remember anode just write positive electrode in the exam otherwise you'll get them confused and this is the negative electrode which is also called the cathode but again if you can't remember those words I really just recommend you using the words positive and negative otherwise you might lose some silly marks trying to guess those extra words the actual liquid that you put in the bottom here that's being broken up is called the electrolyte so this molten lead bromide in this case is the electrolyte and when a current is passed through the electrolyte through these electrodes so these would be connected to um, a power pack so for example up here you'd have some sort of power connecting to your electrodes allowing a current to flow in this electrolyte here you then have your lead ions and your bromide ions starting to separate so you'd have um, Pb2 plus ions remembering metal ions always make um, positive ions and then you'd have your um, bromide ions remember when it's an ion you say it's I so bromide ions which would be R minus and they would be in solution now and when you pass a current through those ions are free to move so when it was a powder the ions are not free to move so we can't separate it but now it's molten those ions are free to move and the movement of charged particles is a current so that allows the current to flow and complete the circuit. Now what happens is ne positive and negative attract. So the positive ions move to the negative electrode. 
so you'll find all the lead ions collecting at the negative electrode and the negative ions will collect at the positive electrode and you can see there how this um, molten electrolyte will then start to split up into the elements lead and bromine. Now when they get to the electrode the ions have to either lose or gain electrons so if you are um, a Pb2 plus ion you would have to gain electrons so the lead ions have to gain electrons at the negative electrode and the bromide ions would have to give away electrons or lose electrons to become bromine so what we'll collect then at the negative electrode will be once it's gained electrons it will be just Pb for lead and the bromide once it loses electrons will become bromine so bromine is always written as Br2 just like O2 or H2 or N2 um, it's one of those what we call diatomic molecules where there's always two atoms together so at the negative electrode you just get the Pb for lead and at the positive electrode you would get Br2 which is bromine so not forgetting that when it's an element again we call it ene and not ide whereas over here when it was an ion we called it bromide so when these um, ions are losing and gaining electrons there's a couple of key words that we need to know and that is the words oxidation and reduction so to remember these if you remember the word oil rig you will remember that oxidation is losing and reduction is gaining okay and we're talking about electrons here so oxidation is losing electrons and reduction is gaining electrons one really to have on your wall I think to try and remember oil rig oxidation is losing reduction is gaining so in this case the lead ions are gaining electrons okay so at the negative electrode this is where reduction is happening because the ions are gaining electrode so over uh, sorry the ions are gaining electrons so over here is where reduction is happening so reduction is happening at the negative electrode and on the positive electrode you've got the bromine ions which are losing electrons and therefore this is where oxidation is occurring so that's the basis of electrolysis the um, substance is here the electrolyte has to be in solution or molten okay so or heated up and turned into a liquid and you need to remember then that positive ions are attracted to the negative electrode and this is where reduction happens where they gain electrons negative ions are attracted to the positive electrode and this is where oxidation happens where they lose electrons and then they are um, released as their elements or collected at the electrode so the, le the lead will just stick to the electrode here the bromine um, gas will be collected off so if you found this video on electrolysis useful then please like the video below and subscribe and join me in my next videos about electrolysis where I go into a little bit more detail.